It's the Cinemato podcast with, with Kathy and Mark. <laughs> We're here. And it's so we exciting. Are, <laughs> we are just so amped up. For no reason. No, we we're um there's an anthology horror project, I which is those. one of my favorite things. I like anthologies. I like short I thought I like sort of short stories. I've yeah. always loved the idea of, you know, mm -hmm. anthology shows and horror anthologies. There's been so many. I mean, going way back to, you know, Tales from the Dark Side and and uh, you know, Tales from the Crypt and all those yeah. kind of shows. But That's this one right. that we're gonna talk about this one. is from Indonesia. Mm. Yes. And we really the, we've done reviews of some of his other movies on our channel. Yes. And yes. Joko uh, Anwar. Yes, and he's an Indonesian filmmaker that uh, two films that we uh, reviewed, Impedagor and Satan Slaves, uh, they're available the streaming. And if you haven't seen them, if you want to see a really interesting take, not just because it's from Indonesia, uh, because you kind of delve into their world mm -hmm. and the yeah. interesting setting, but you just, but it feels very, yeah. very lived in kind of folk horror. And, yeah. uh, but he's also a really, just a really accomplished filmmaker. And there's some really great scenes in both those oh. films that I still think about yeah. after having yeah. the movie seen from years ago. Yeah. So he is the uh, mind behind this anthology, which is on Netflix. It's seven episodes. It's called Ooh. Nightmares and Daydreams. Yeah. And we're going to take a look at the trailer for it. And uh, I don't want to know anything else about it. I don't, I think, yeah. is there, are all the episodes currently streaming, Kathy, or is They're it just streaming? Gonna, I'm ready okay, to go. So I might so just we wanna, through these. Yeah. Exactly. So we're doing a trailer reaction right now because we wanted to get like a taste of it. And then we're going to try and do uh, reviews of each episode. Right. So stay tuned for that because right. it's horror and it's Joko. And I love the way he builds worlds. Like he, you feel like you're lived in. You feel like you're there. Like he's great at this. And I know he didn't necessarily direct all these, but he's he's overseeing them. So they're going to be kind of like like Del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities where he right. kind of yeah. oversees it. It's yeah. his sensibility. But. You know, he has a lot of talented people doing uh, their own version of horror. So let's take a look. All right. Let's look at the teaser or the trailer. What? So excited. Are we ready? Yeah. Quiet. Everybody quiet <laughs> on the set. Mark, be right, quiet. Go. Quiet. <laughs> it's me. I know. I got my stomach is making. <laughs> All right. Here we go. It's pretty dark so far. Can you come in and be? Can you come in be? Jujur sama kami. Kamu kemana? Tuhan. Kalau kamu keluar lewat pintu sebelah sana. Jangan. Ada banyak hal yang manusia tidak pernah bisa mengerti di dunia ini. Mereka hidup dengan nyaman, dengan membatasi diri dari kenyataan-kenyataan yang tidak pernah bisa mereka terima. Oh, sekarang saya bisa menghentikan. Lu lihat tadi gua nyekek leher gua sendiri. Saya bekerja untuk seseorang yang diberi petunjuk. Dia tahu banyak rahasia. Dan kami butuh orang-orang seperti kami. Untuk? Untuk menyelamatkan kemanusiaan. Tahu. Lalu kalian apa? Rantai tertinggi dari piramida oh. makanan. Mm -hmm. On the dinner table. Ambil <laughs> kendali. Oh. Wow. I love that clock scene. Him yeah. falling. Yeah. Is it looks pretty beautiful. fantastic. Looks really stylish wow. and and very wow. cinematic. Very yeah, like, kind of cool. real. Yeah. yeah. Mm, looks it, really it's good. good. I love the shot in the woods of the people standing. I mean, the stuff like that is just like he, he, whoever is directing those episodes. I'm sure he directed a couple, I'm guessing. Um, I would hope so. But um, it looks really good. It looks like, okay, yeah. now I really want Fantastic. to prank it. It's got a vibe. Yeah. Another show that I like. I mean, I like anthologies, I like horror anthologies, but also like sci fi and anthologies and horror sci fi sometimes 
merge in weird ways. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the recent, the best recent mergings of horror and science fiction is Black Mirror. It's yes. not I traditional love that. horror, but some of the science fiction ideas are horrific. So you get, and it, and it seems yeah. to me that this has a little bit, a little bit of that flavor of, oh. of um, there's some tech, techie type stuff like science fictiony looking scenes i think I you're there. right there Burke, because yeah. i'm just reading it goes tales of supernatural sci-fi phenomena oh okay Ooh. that's sort of mm. like part of the log line of it so yeah i think you kind of nailed it on the head there that there's some, there's that aspect as part of it so kind of a black mirror ish indonesian style mm. vibe maybe which and yeah, I'm all about. Costuming reminded me of Squid Games a little bit. Like there was some some strange, like cult looking strangeness, right. or maybe you're inside of a virtual reality or like yeah. Tron like world or something. Looked pretty yeah. cool. Apparently, yeah. he directs the first episode called Old House, uh, and um, he wrote and directed the first episode, and so he kicks it off. So the first one you get to see is his. It's his it's baby. Him. Yes. Right. And then apparently the all the episodes take place in the same town in different time periods. So they all kind of interrelate. So while they feel like they're in their own world, apparently there is kind of a, a um world some connection. they're all interconnected somehow. Oh, so cool. I love the idea. He not only is he, he overseeing a bunch of short, beautiful anthology short horror films, he's like actually has them cohabitating in a, in a cool way. And who knows how that's going to end up at the end. Like, right. I love that idea of just being a little bit more conceptually cohesive that's great right. yeah i, I love when things him. tie together like that where you see something yeah. in an early episode and then in a later episode maybe it pertains to that story yeah. as well mm -hmm. things like that are always kind of like sort of mind-blowing because you're like oh my god that's yeah. when that happened or that's the same right. guy that just walked out mm -hmm. and it's it also it also takes a lot of care to to make a show like that to make a story yeah. where you're foreshadowing and you're, you're thinking ahead and you're thinking forward and that's mm -hmm. It's a puzzle they put together, and, and I appreciate yes. the you know, the work yes. to put into that, saying, hey, in episode four, it goes something back to episode one, you know, and then go, okay, yeah. that's really cool. And it, it's almost it's rewarding that, as, a, as, as an mm -hmm. audience member to, to see the whole episode. It is rewarding. That. You know? yeah. That's a good word, because I know Stephen King yeah. does that, too, and I've always loved it when you know there'd be like some throwaway line in a book about, you know, oh, there was a story about some family up up north north of here that were terrorized by a big dog and a woman got stuck in a car <laughs> and that's yeah. and you'll just sort of throw yeah. that in and you'll yep. go oh that's cujo yeah <laughs> that's true the, and they all take the place in the same town so the dairy. Uh, there's uh, always something or, or dairy or those, yeah those are places you want to stay away from because they all kind yeah. of stuff yeah. go to castle rock yeah. whatever yeah. you do is done oh. for tourism in those areas right so i'm sold like this looked really cool i love the kind of almost analog um yeah. kind of almost retro look of it like the title like they had like a flat title that looked kind of designed like it was you know from the 70s or something i really liked that and uh it kind of reminds me a little remember the del toro episode the cabinet curiosities episode that was the kind of cult it was directed by um panos uh, oh yes ooh, yeah really yeah. cool very um tactile and I love the practical effects. Like it feels like it's all in one world. It feels almost right. kind of retro, like an old movie, like just kind of a, right. a feel that felt this way. And which I also like about his movies. Again, they feel very lived in. They feels very real and grounded. Even if some crazy things are happening, he does such a great job of not overdoing any kind of CGI. The clock thing is very overdone CGI, but in a cool stylized way. <laughs> but the rest yeah, it was, of it was very grounded. Like, I love the cult, the cult people and the red costumes. Yeah. And that yeah. was nuts. No, like I think that. what you're saying is super important with stuff. I think people there's a backlash going on against too much CGI, yeah. too much AI, too much stuff that yeah. people are like, oh, somebody show just show me something real. to make it. And if you, sh yeah, show me yeah. something real is yeah. is um like if you can make if you can make a movie that gives you that feeling that you got from those yes. old shows, you know. Yeah. Like we we still we all talk about uh, 70s movies and stuff. And it's like when you watch a 70s movie, movie from the 70s, it's a guarantee that there's no CGI in it. <laughs> there's there's not going to be any kind of digital trickery. What you're seeing on the screen and there's no probably no you know right. green screen or whatever. What you're seeing is what they filmed. And that right. feeling there's a visceral like, you know, <laughs> bullshit detector that people have built in that we can. Yeah. I think we can feel it when it's I mean, real. think about it. Jaws was 
done practically, done yeah. in the water. They had mechanical shark that was a constant problem because you're right. salt yeah. water with mechanics. All these shark movies that are coming now, they're all CGI. You can tell yeah. there's a disconnect. You don't really give a shit. It's like, you know, it's not real. It just has a fakeness to it that the first yeah. Jaws didn't have. Even I'm when it was kind of awkward it. sometimes, like the jumping yeah. up, still, it was there. He was interacting with this machine, even though it wasn't there. It just, it just felt Nick better saw, than a CGI shark brain, jumping on it. Your brain knows. A five-year-old can look yeah. at, uh, you know, Job of the Hut, the original Job of the Hut. Go, that thing is right there. But then when they do yeah. the, the CGI, add that in, you go, oh no, it's just you know. It's and awful. another aspect of it, a lot of times, especially with Jaws. Jaws is a great example. Is a lot of times limitations force filmmakers and creative people working in film force them to be resourceful, and sometimes pushing people to be resourceful. Yeah making a creative endeavor like a film brings out more than it would if it was too easy. Like if you yeah. just already were using some kind of stock footage or some, you know, like, oh, let's just do a digital yeah. effect here or let's hide that with a digital effect. If you were doing, if you were actually on set and filming, your brain has to work three or four times as fast if you're, sure. if you're shooting, you know, what you're going to see on the yeah. film, if you're doing it in the camera. So I think it, what it does is it puts you into a higher state of awareness when you have no, when you're, when you're um, limiting yourself to use less digital and CGI. Yeah. And if you're going for that sort of analog vibe, I think it makes, I, th I think that's an aspect of it. I don't know how to explain yeah. it any better than that. That's, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that makes sense. Well, uh, we'll throw up a poster real fast after hearing that because this is an illustrated poster, which I think is interesting because it kind of ties in in yeah. a way. It has a kind of retro vibe again. We have something surreal and insane happening. You can get there's probably these are all actors from probably different this different stories, but I love yeah. the fact that it's illustrated because that also brings it back to that you know it's not a photo. I mean, it probably isn't a way, but it's not a Photoshop heavy poster it looks like someone actually you know painted over it or painted it so right. it has that kind of really tactile you know textural thing and then there's just something kind of cool about just seeing an illustration i mean i just yeah. i love this it's fantastic whether it was like digitally a, created or not it, the intent was to have it look retro like a painting like a real exactly almost like so, a pulpy kind of um, yeah. like, like a yeah story uh, cover almost exactly i was gonna say yeah. pulp cover or comic book yeah. or something like that so yeah well, the, it's cool the orange light is great and you know just i like nightmares is reflecting daydreams i don't know pretty smart stuff looking forward yeah. to seeing this let us know what you think is trailer reaction and then as we're going to go through and review let us know what your favorite episodes are without giving away any spoilers let us know in the comments yeah. if you watch it all what is your favorite episode from the series because i can't wait to watch this so yeah and, uh, cool. joko anwar check him out too his other films they're worth yeah. they're worth looking at so yes. thanks very much everybody we'll see you guys soon bye bye, bye.